In Huntsville, Alabama, Werner von Braun and the Army are ready. In less than three months from the Russian success, von Braun mobilized a workforce of 3,200 and combines his Redstone and Jupiter in a single rocket that will launch America's first satellite, Explorer 1. At 10.55 p.m. on January 31st, 1958, Dr. Werner von Braun, now an American citizen, becomes an American hero. taste for space is now swelling into a national appetite. Von Braun spends more time in Washington than in Huntsville, feeding visions of trips to Mars and beyond to leaders who still smart from the humiliation of being second to the Russians. He proposes the separation of space exploration from the military services, and he is listened to. On the 14th of April in 1958, President Eisenhower calls for the establishment of an independent space agency. NASA is formed. Huntsville becomes the George Marshall Space Flight Center. And Von Braun begins at last in his 46th year the development of a rocket that will go to the moon, the Saturn. His first Huntsville home, now in 1960 filled with a family of three children, is outgrown. As he and Maria plan to move, the Russians hit the moon first with an unmanned rocket. I would not be at all surprised to be hearing a human voice from outer space that will have an unmistakable Russian accent. His prediction is accurate. The Russian cosmonaut Gagarin is the first man in space. A month later, America evens the score as Alan Shepard moves into history. We take an additional risk by making it in full view of the world. But as shown by the feet of astronaut Shepard, this very risk enhances our stature when we are successful. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The young American president brings to America's space program the vision and the muscle to assure Von Braun the tools to further develop his Saturn moon rocket. There is a curious bond that ties these two men together as Von Braun and Kennedy talk of the endless limits to what man can accomplish. Each recognizes in the other that part of human personality that separates the idle dreamer from the practical builder. It is the son of an ambassador who will make the son of a baron the first billion dollar scientist. These are heady days in Huntsville. The Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs powered by Von Braun's rockets move step by step towards the one giant step. The Earth-bound dreamer, too old at 53 to fly into space, must content himself with being the center of a universe of admiring co-workers. There is time now, at last, for a personal life. The playful clowning with the sound of music. The exploration of the world below the surface. The quiet exhilaration of earthbound flight. The years of single-minded purposefulness have now at last subsided. Werner von Braun, his wife and children, are now allowed more time in the comforting warmth of family life. In the serenity of his Huntsville home, he can quietly contemplate man's greatest adventure. <laughs> 